Hello everyone, welcome back. So, just getting over the remnants of the tropical storm that they were gonna call Alex. It rained a lot. I mean, my pool is totally full. It's totally full. And you know, it's the perfect time to just give you an update on this Tempest by Weatherflow, you know? This thing right here, let me get this down. So this right here has just been an awesome piece of gear. The Tempest by Weatherflow, self-contained smart weather station. Captured a lot of rain, a lot of wind gusts here in Vero Beach. And uh, after a couple years, what do I think about it? Let me show you right now. So I've had this Tempest for a couple years now and it hasn't failed me yet. It's been through some elements. Um, all I've really done with this is cleaned it up with some uh, very mild detergent. I didn't want to bleach it. I used a little bit of uh, heavy detergent on my Davis I had years ago and actually took off the labeling. So nothing has failed yet. If you're interested in this Tempest, I'll even have Chris tell you here in a second when he comes over because he has one too and it hasn't really given me any problem. Now, when I first made this video about this unit, there wasn't that many stations in my area on the map because you can look at anybody's Tempest station on a map, on the app or on a website and show what their weather conditions are. And that's the big thing. You can look all day long on the weather and it'll tell you, you know, uh, the, the temperature is this, the wind is this, but this is in my backyard. So I know that if it says 86, but it's 91 in my backyard, it's 91 in my backyard. Now I have this mounted with the quarter 20 screw on the bottom. You may be looking at this saying, what is this? It comes with another mount that you can put on a pole. This is gonna go in my tower soon. And I'm using actually uh, a piece from my Chameleon F-loop uh, loop antenna to screw onto there so that I can get on that carbon fiber mast and tripod that I bought from, or Gigaparts had given me a couple of years ago, which that thing is still making it out in the weather every day. Now, I haven't got my tower up yet, but, so, you know, there's a little bit of uh, discoloration on here from the sun, you know, some, some stuff in here. What you wanna really do is you wanna keep the wind sensor right here, the ultrasonic wind sensor clean. So, very little maintenance, but I usually try to keep this, there has been a couple spider webs that have been built in between here, okay? And uh, you wanna keep, you now there's a little bit of discoloration here. You wanna keep that clean and you wanna keep, um, you know, the solar panels free of any kind of debris in front of it because it's gotta charge the battery in there. Uh, other than that, there hasn't been anything I've had to do. Once in a while, it has come up and said Tempest is offline. And then a few minutes later, Tempest is online. I'm not sure if that was my internet or the hub or this device, I'm not sure. Other than that though, it's been pretty solid. Um, you know, just keep it clean. Uh, and, and that's pretty much what I got to say about this. This is a self-contained, for those who haven't seen my first video, you can see that uh, we still got some wind blowing here if that's in the microphone from this little tropical storm resonance. For those who haven't seen, this started off, I think, as a Kickstarter. It turned into a really advanced all-in-one weather station. No moving parts, solar powered. This is ultrasonic wind sensor up here, which means the wind blows through here. It's got ultrasonic, uh, what would they call those, Transdu transducers up top in here that detect the wind speed and the wind direction and the max gusts and all that stuff. And it shows you on the app uh, the, the history of all that. I'll show you that in a second. A haptic rain sensor. So the haptic rain sensor operates like this. Uh, if, you know, there's no tipping bucket, no accumulation of rain, it's got a haptic, maybe like a piezoelectric type of device. It can detect the, the size of the raindrops, the amount of raindrops on here, and give you an idea of how much rain has accumulated. So with this tropical storm that just went through, uh, they were saying, you know, Naples and Boca and Miami and West Palm, they got inches and inches of rain. I got about 2.85 inches of rain in my backyard. Now, the pool is full, just to the point of overflowing, but 2.85 inches. And that'll let me know how much I need to water the grass, which I know these plants are gonna love it, or how much rain I've actually accumulated right here on the top of my sensor. Uh, the temperature sensor here, this, this is a, uh, it's got a shield on here, so it takes the ambient air. Somebody asked me about this the other day, a guy I work with, Brian, and he said, 
Well, you leave yours in the sun. I leave mine in the shade to get an accurate temperature, and that's incorrect. The reason this has these shields here is because it'll give you an accurate temperature in sunlight and everything because, you know, number one, it's got a you know, charge with solar. Number two, the air moves through here. It keeps the temperature sensor to ambient air. Now, you know, other ones like Davis and stuff, they have a fan aspirated shield because if there's no moving air in here, it'll, it, you'll have the, the sun heating up the device. And the device gives you, like when you start your car and it says like 119, and then as you're driving, it cools down because you got air moving and stuff. Same principle, except this is pretty accurate. And my pool pump has a sensor outside that tells me the temperature, the temperature of the pool water and the temperature outside air. And this is really close to that. I would trust this before I trust my uh, pool sensor. But sometimes people say, wow, it's only 86 on the weather. And they say, oh, it's not that hot. And this thing has said 90, 91 in my backyard. And the heat index, and then you'll get the heat index, the humidity plus the temperature, you'll get the 104 heat index, whatever. Um, lightning detection still works great. Lightning detection is cool. This thing, my wife loves that. She gets a kick out of that. She, she's anti-technology, doesn't have Facebook or anything, but she loves when this thing will say, it's raining at the Ponderosa. Lightning detected 21, 24 miles, she'll go on the radar. I showed her how to read the radar. She'll see and say, wow, we got a severe thunderstorm coming. And she can see the little, you know, storm cell come in and get this and get an idea of when lightning is happening. So I haven't had any issues with this. This thing is great. Okay. And uh, I just wanted to give you that update about the Tempest by Weatherflow. Uh, let me see what Chris has to say. He's coming over. He's got one. I've given him one. I bought that for him. And I want to see, uh, let you know what he says. We'll show you the app real quick. And uh, yeah, that's my update after a couple of years of this thing. All right, so Chris did come over finally, and Chris has the same one. I bought him that one because he's my best friend. So I just gave him a spiel, Chris, on what I think. Tell me what you think about this thing, honestly. I think it's great. Um, you know, all the features and that, especially if you have kids. What features? Tell what features. Well, especially like the lightning the lightning sensor. That's what Michelle likes. Yeah, you know, especially like kids are in the pool or playing outside. We get instant alert on the phone. And... Uh, we know right away when lightning's close. So what, what besides that though, what do you we got kids over here playing at the pool? What does that mean to you though with this weather station though? Why why is it cool to have something like that? You know, for the safety of your kids, man. But aren't you interested in weather though? Yeah, I mean the weather's good to know. I mean you know how much rain you're getting. And uh, you know everything. But has anything failed? Has anything done anything? How, what have you done to clean it? Like, you know, what's uh I just pretty much just kind of wipe it down. I mean other than that, it's pretty much maintenance free, you know. All right, so thanks for your input, Chris, because, um, you know, they can hear it from me, but you are a user as well. What about the map? Remember the map we showed? Oh, yeah. There, when we did this video originally, there was not many stations in this area with that map. And what have you seen on that map? Yeah, there's tens of thousands. Oh, and, everywhere, and everywhere. A lot well, in Indian River County, though. Like if, like if you zoom out the map, you're going to have to wait for it to load. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of people. So I, I, I love the Tempest. I do. I do. And, yeah, uh, de definitely worth the investment, you know, whether you're an avid weather, you know, you like to follow the weather, you have, you know, little ones or kids, a pool. Or, or even if you want to be a Jim Cantori wannabe and you want to know what the weather is in your area right now in the backyard. Yeah, you know, sunlight. I mean, it has everything. Yeah. The Tempest by Weatherflow. Another person right here, and I bought it for him. So he's giving you the God's honest truth. Very, very well worth it. As far as the Tempest app goes, it's just the same as it was when I originally made the video. Uh, gives you a lot of information right on the home screen, like some, uh, you know, forecasts based on trends, maybe a little bit of internet data and um, current conditions. It gives you a forecast hour by hour. And as well as if you click up here, you get your temperature and dew point, your barometric pressure, lightning detected only two days ago, um, wind speed, UV index and precipitation. And if you click on each one of these, you can see a graph. There's the red is the dew point and blue is the temperature. You can go back and see exactly what the peaks were by clicking on there. It'll tell you up top, the high and the low or the high and the dew point. Um, same thing for um, the wind. You know, you can see the winds that we had. The max winds that I had here with the storm was about, I don't know, 17 
miles an hour, the gust, you know, uh, the blue down here is the average, the red is the gust, okay, and the green is the uh, lull. So it gives you uh, an idea and a direction up top. So you get a, a history with this. So you can go back and see, wow, at two o'clock when we had that storm, what was the wind speed and the pressure and all that stuff to see you know, exactly what that storm was. And if you go down here in the bottom, other stuff here, rain duration yesterday and today uh, and stuff like that. Now, if I go to settings and I go down here to Tempest WX map, that'll open the website and show you, and this is what Chris was talking about, it takes forever to load and I have pretty fast internet. There's a lot of stations on this map. Watch this, this is just in the United States and Canada and Mexico. And just to zoom in, I mean, it's got to load all these thousands of stations. It takes a little while because of all these stations here. But if I go right down here to Florida, and I mean, man, that's a lot. Every one of these you can click on and get weather data, okay? Look at this. A lot of people have this. Loading, loading. That's only a fault maybe of my phone plus the internet and the uh, data from the website. So, see here? Look at the whole East Coast here. If you look at the video I did originally, there wasn't that many stations over here on the East Coast. Look, right? All these here. And you can click on each one of them and see all the conditions at that station. So if you're watching a storm coming in, you can, um, you know, see, watch other people's sites here, you know, like this one here. Gives you all the information here. Right, so it's got a lot of potential, a lot of um, good information. Other weather uh, weather flow apps here, like you can connect this to my Google Home and ask it to, um, you know, what's the what's the weather flow, what's the weather on the weather flow and stuff like that, and it'll tell you. So, and smart home integrations for your sprinklers, for your air conditioner, depending on outside, um, you know, temperature and the rainfall. And the lighting, if you want to turn your lights on inside when it gets dark outside, the light sensor on a weather station will tell you that. Pretty cool stuff, man. I've used a lot of this uh, you know, stuff for the, not a lot of it. I haven't integrated it to my sprinklers or my lights, but I have uh, integrated it to Google. And um, pretty cool stuff, man. All right, so the weather has turned out actually quite exceptional now after a tropical storm. Um, it is on my carbon fiber mast and my premium all aluminum tripod. I got both of these links are in the description, both of these from gigaparts.com. Um, they gifted them to me when I first bought my RV and decided to make the move a couple years ago. And these things are still holding on with no rust, look at this. And um, the carbon fiber mast, my wife's like, isn't that gonna break? No, that ain't breaking, no, that ain't breaking. So the Tempest, that thing is great. Check out the links in the description. And uh, there's your update. More videos are on the way. I'll give you a, a synopsis. That, yes, I did hold the tripod down with a brick and a battery with some wire just to keep that thing from blowing around 30, 40 mile an hour winds this weekend. So thanks for watching. More videos are on the way. 7-3. This is KJ4YZI.